Berniston. It is 2015 and it is time for me to sneak to you some of my new dyes that are being released next week in Anaheim at the CHA Mega Show. Now you are seeing some of these fun projects kind of flashing behind me on the screen. I have an amazing design team. They've been hard at work with the dyes as well. So you're going to see a ton of great ideas right off the bat using these brand new dyes. How many dies? 17. How cool is that? And I like to say they fall into the A, B, C's. Okay? So there are dies that I would consider A, stands for artsy. Something a little different for me because I don't usually do too much in the artsy genre, but uh, there is a lot of dies in the collection that really kind of steer that way. So that's going to be great for those of you who love that kind of really sophisticated artsy sort of look. There's going to be something for you for that. Okay, the B stands for beachy. Okay, so you asked, I answered several cool dyes that are in a beach type of theme. And of course you need some further stuff too. And the C, you don't think I'd leave you out, do you? The C stands for cutesy. There are new characters in the collection and two new props set and those are really going to feed your need for the super, super cute look. Okay, settle in. I'm about to show you all of these new dyes. Let's start out with a bang and introduce a brand new category of die for me. These are dies called pop stands. The first two dies on this slide are the pop stands. There's the bathtub and the Eiffel Tower. And what's unique about these dies is that they're designed just to be a really cool decorator die that happen to have an option to pop them up into a standing pop up. Let me demonstrate with the bathtub die. So you can see all of these cool accessories that just come in the set. It's a rubber ducky and various bubbles and a faucet and some cloth feet. And all of those combine to make a really cool bathtub. And then what you've also got is this optional pop stand die. Now if you want to make a 3D pop-up card, then you're going to have to cut a second bathtub. And it's optional, but I like to cut a second set of cloth feet as well. If you're familiar with pop it ups at all, you know about the alignment nubs and the pop stands have them. This allows you to put that pop stand into any size card anywhere along the fold. And then you just roll it through and what it does is it cuts those little tabs right into the card at the right spot for you to be able to animate the tub. Okay, I'll start by putting some adhesive on all four of those tabs. And you can see the adhesive is on top of the tabs and I just use some little mini glue dots. So my decorator tub, that's the one that's all decorated up real nicely. That's going to go face down in front of a couple of those tabs, and then I'm just going to fold them over and stick them to the back of those bathtub's feet. And I did design the pop stand so that the tabs would match the shape of whatever the item is. So in this case, the bathtub, and you can see how they are completely hidden once you get them up and onto the feet of the tub. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the other tub, and that's just the plain white one that I'm going to use just for its structural ability and I'm just going to put the tabs on that one as well. Now this next step is optional, but I'm going to show you why I like to do it. I always cut a second set of the claw feet and put them actually on the inside of that structural tub because that's the side you're actually going to see a little bit of when the pop-up is open. You're not really going to see the back side of it. So while you could also cut a set for the back, this is really the spot where you're going to get the most bang for it. So now those little claw feet are going to cover your tab completely and you don't see it at all. And then the, what you do to make this into a pop-up is you just use some little glue dots, some adhesive out on the ends, attach the two tubs to each other. Now you're going to see what I mean about seeing just a little hint of those little extra claw feet down in there behind the tub. As for the front of the card, you just need a little piece of paper or cardstock to cover those little tab holes. Or you could maybe get creative with them, put some ribbon through them, do something fun. The Eiffel Tower is going to work exactly the same way. It comes with its own pop stand so that it is designed to fit the legs of the Eiffel Tower. Raquel Mason used Whiskers the Cat with the bathtub for this fun card. Here's one that Kelly Booth made where she glittered every bit of that tub and Rocky the Crab, one of the new characters. And Karen Aiken used the tub on one of the other pop-up dies, the Lorna label, and used Buster the Dog. I love how Karen also used the Paris edges to make her bath mat. The Paris edges were designed to go nicely with the Eiffel Tower, like you see them used here on Kelly Booth's card. And Frances Byrne also used the Paris edges with her Eiffel Tower card for the Ooh La Paris card. And then here's the Paris edges used by Donna Wright just on the edges of a heart pivot card. There are new additions to the accordion album and frame edges category. There is a new rectangle accordion, it's a portrait style album, and then there is the new star accordion, which is a square album. 
There is a new set of Katie Flourish frame edges that'll fit the rectangle accordion. And it's called the Katie Flourish frame edges because it also fits the Katie label accordion. And that means that the two existing Katie frame edges, the stars and the holly, will also fit the rectangle. Aren't these colors fantastic in this Paris themed rectangle accordion by Kelly Booth? And here's a sample of how you can use some of the beach inspired dyes in the collection with the rectangle accordion like Raquel Mason did. Frances Byrne followed my video tutorial for how to turn portrait albums into landscape orientation and made this wonderful rectangle accordion with the bathtub. The new frame edges that fit the star album are called the star fancy frame edges because they also fit the fancy accordion, which means the fancy frame edges fit the star. Frances Byrne illustrates perfectly the cool barn star that's included with the star accordion. It's scored to fold up into a 3D star and it also has that extra triangle to make it two-tone. The star accordion is going to work so well with all the beach themed items as well because you can make starfish. The next category of die is the pivot cards. There are five existing pivot cards and now there is a new one to add to that collection. It's number 973, the tags pivot card. I love that I was able to get so many decorator pieces into this die set. All these different tags and there's a paper clip and a little fleur-de-lis and all these tag reinforcers. It has no theme, so you can go kind of artsy like I did on the packaging, or take a look at this wonderful Easter card by Kelly Booth where she styled Chili the Penguin as a chick. Or maybe you're looking for soft and pretty like this Valentine's card by Karen Aiken where she also incorporated the Paris edges and the heart pivot card decorator dies. There is a new die in the pull card collection, so joining the spiral circle pull card is the new rectangle pull card. Now I designed this die just to have one tuck slot at the top to keep it closed. The other one has two, but on this one the rectangle is so big it needs to be able to open a little at the bottom. If you had that closed in a tuck slot it would just fall over. There is an optional pop-up element just like with the other card. This time it's a spinner die. So I'm going to show you how to use this die and you can see all the cool action that you get by adding it inside the card. And it's just a single piece. It's so easy to do. Just like with the spiral circle pull card die, you will use the alignment nubs that come on the rectangle pull card to be able to line it up over the center fold of the card. And then you just run that through the machine to do the die cutting. Now you can see what the die has done. It has cut that little tuck slot, it has cut half the rectangle, and it scored it for folding around the rectangle. So you fold the card in half, you back fold around the rectangle, and that is all there is to it. If you want to hold the card closed, you just kind of bend it to get it up and underneath that tuck slot opening it is just a pull. Now let's talk about that spinner die. The die scores it for folding in three locations. So one up the center and then kind of in the middle of each side. And that will make this kind of funky looking little piece. The adhesive goes in the outer two panels and then you're just going to peel up that liner and make those two panels sticky. Now if you want to have the item spinning up towards the top, which is what I want for this card, then you line it up so that the spinner is, is pointed down into the card, but that outer panel is lined up in the fold of the card, and it can go anywhere in the fold. Then you fold the thing in half, you can see the adhesive on the other side, fold the card closed, and that will attach it to the other side. So you see that what you end up having is a spinner that kind of points as an upward mountain. And then when you want to make something spin, you put the adhesive on the left side of the spinner and then you add your item to that. And then what will happen is when the card is open, it will be suspended in the air like this and then when it closes, it'll spin it underneath. And you can make all sorts of fun effects by having items that stick out partially or maybe even something like this with a little window hole just using the pieces, the decorator pieces that come with the die. You can also use the spinner die with some of the other pop-ups. So you can see I put it here with the Lorna label, and when you use it in a vertical card like this, it becomes an angled pop-up. So that's what I've used there behind Rocky the Crab to be able to kind of animate him at an angle. This is such a pretty card by Helen Cryer where she used two spinners, one angled up, one angled down for her flowers inside the card. Raquel Mason also used two spinners in this rectangle pull card featuring a ton of Hoppy the Frogs. The rectangle pull card can also be used to animate the clock and gears die, as I did on this card. Remember, B is for the beach, and this collection has a new Adirondack chair, the beach edges, and the palm tree and pale dies. 
And then that combined with Rocky the Crab, you're going to be able to make some amazing beach scenes like Raquel Mason did on this awesome card. But of course the chair doesn't have to be used on the beach as you see in this great card by Francis Byrne. Okay, I think you've already seen them in the sample so far, but there are three new character dies in this collection. They are Buster the Dog, Whiskers the Cat, and Rocky the Crab. And in addition to those three new characters, there's two new props set. There's the Props 4, which is kind of a pets theme, and then the Props 3, which is a snorkel set. Let's see some samples. Look at this rectangle pull card by Kelly Booth using Rocky on a lower spinner. And you can see the snorkel set that he's wearing. Helen Cryer made this great fancy accordion using Whiskers the Cat, and I like how she turned Happy Birthday into Happy Purr Day. Raquel Mason invited Whiskers and Buster to join Poppy at her garden bench party, and I just love all of the props and things she used on this card. Kelly Booth did a really cool lace technique with double-sided adhesive and glitter, and then she cut Whiskers the cat out of the lace. And I had fun incorporating Whiskers the cat in a cat in the hat theme with the bathtub die. You should see these new Pop It Ups dies in your local stores by the end of January to early February 2015. Facebook users, I'd love it if you'd like my Facebook page, Karen Berniston Designer. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel, and of course you'll always find more ideas on my blog, karenberniston.com. Thanks for watching.